All right, welcome everyone. This is the Viper Professional uh, Training and Support Webinar. Uh, today's date is Saturday, July the 8th, 2017. This is a Saturday morning webinar. The title is How to Manage Losses. And hint, don't have many. And as everyone knows, it's been to our webinars or our live trading room. Everything that we say and do at Viper Trading Systems is for educational purposes only. Futures trading, Forex trading, any kind of financial instruments trading involves risk. Therefore, there's always risk of loss. You should only trade discretionary capital, and that is money that you can afford to lose. Nothing said in this webinar. Other webinars we might have, our live trading room or anything else with Viper Trading Systems, should ever be construed as trading or investment advice. And as always, everyone does trade at their own sole discretion. Any questions on the disclaimer? If not, we are going to get started. All right. A real quick show of hands first off. How many of you diagnose your charts well before you take your trade? You know, rather than just willy-nilly jumping into a trade, taking a chance on it? All right, I'm seeing quite a few that say I do. And that's extremely important, isn't it? So asking a question real quick on this chart, what direction would you look to take the trade? Anybody? Everybody? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Longs. So let me ask you a quick question then. Even in the trading room at the, the open of the market, you know, when some of the box in trades and things like that are, are called like uh, short even, but then, you know, I mentioned that, you know, we're at like phantom or something like that. Be really careful. How many of you are ready to actually, you know, get that trade back to the upside? Even if you do scalp, you know, some of those mid bands and things like that. Most of you? Because the one thing you don't want to be on is the wrong side of the trade and then just let the thing go against you. Okay? Because once you look at a chart and you've decided which way you're going to actually go, you know, then you've got to be ready to set your stop. You've got to be ready to look where your next target is. You've got to be ready to know where you're going to, you know, peel off some. And, th and those are all really important. Okay, let's see. Uh, here's a question coming in. I, I try, but sometimes get involved in the trades and do something stupid. You know, and uh, on that question coming in, I totally agree with that because, you know, any of us can get, you know, on the wrong side of a trade simply because, you know, they're moving it quickly and, you know, you think, hey, this is changing directions or whatever and I want to get in early. You know, and then they whip it right back in your face. You pretty quickly find out that they're trying their best to get you. And, uh, you know, we, we can all be our own worst enemy when we're trading, right? We, we've got to change that psyche to where, you know, we stay on the right side uh, of the trade for the most part. If, if a person wants to scalp, that's fine. Did, remember when I showed that scalp yesterday where I had mentioned that support on, um, I think it was gold if I remember right, was at a certain point we had a line drawn. And, and I actually did flip the trade. I showed it. But, you know, if that thing would have gone against me even a little bit, I would have been out of it in a heartbeat. But I knew that it was going to bounce there because I've looked at, a, you know, 10,000 charts as far as that goes, maybe more than that. Over the years, it's probably in the hundreds of thousands. Okay? So, you know, chart time is really important. Knowing your instrument, Charles, I think, is going to teach on that next Thursday. Knowing your instrument is pretty important, too. Okay? NASDAQ, to give an example, trades really nicely a lot of times of the day. Yesterday it even traded nice. But did you notice several times during the week where it was just literally just flopping around? Well, that flopping around can eat your account. So, you know, be very, very careful. You want to definitely be on the right side of the trade when you get in that flopping around stuff. Okay? So uh, let's, let's go ahead and, and uh, diagnose this chart right now then. All right? We're not going to look at any prices just for a minute, but let's say that you're a scalper, okay, and that you do want to, you know, for instance, if this power meter changes red, you might want to take a quick scalp or something. You know, maybe you look at your chart and you say, okay, they've basically been, you know, pretty much down here, not quite, maybe the price did, you know, there might be a wick here, so they've tested that. They haven't really tested 
this right through here so much, have they? You know, right here at about 43. Yeah, they did too. They tested it, so that's good. Um, and then, then you just look at your chart and you say, okay, where have they tested? Now, if this was to pull back and break a swing, like this right through here, for instance, you know, could we take a quick short? Well, you've got support right there and you've got support right there. You know, if you did, I'd probably recommend this one more than the other one, you know, because it's so close. You know, if, if for instance, if they were going to go down and test lower and you wanted to scalp it, you know, draw a trend line or something like that, you could, you could do that. But remember, if you go against the trend, that you've got to get that mindset that you're ready to go the direction of the trend the moment the market decides to. Let's see, another question is coming in. I think my most blatant downfall is inability to accept the stopouts when I believe in my mind that the trade is going to go in my favor on the next bar. But alas, more times than not, I am soon in a big loss and have to bail out. And uh, that that's exactly what this webinar is about today too, is you know, where we can we can all avoid that type of thing. Keep in mind that, you know, when markets are really going like sideways to give an example, they move a little quicker. You ever notice that? You know, that, that for instance, if you try to, to sell a top or you buy a bottom, they've bounced off of it by the time you even, you know, figure it out. And that's why we've got to be on the right side of the trade. Now, what I personally like and I think are the safest trades you can possibly take, and this is the way we teach it, is retracement trades. You know, for instance, let's let's just look at the real chart on this, and, and I'm going to show you what a lot of people end up doing, which is not the smart way to trade. They look at a chart like this, and they think, oh my gosh, this thing's already running away from me. You know, I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, pop in, say, a couple of contracts. And then they hit the buy button, okay? And, you know, not thinking, okay, well, I've got a 15 tick stop. Let's even move it to 12 even. Okay, we'll move it to like 12. Let's see if we can get 12. That's 11. Should be 12 right there. Okay, now, if I get stopped out on this, that's $240, okay? Okay. And not only that, if it kind of plows through that stop, it may be closer to 300. And then you have to make it up, don't you? But see, a lot of, a lot of times people go, you know what, this thing's running away from me. I've just got to jump in it. And it retraced a little bit, so I'm going to do that. Okay? Now, is that a smart way to trade? Anybody? Well, let's, let's find out. Let's just play it and see. We'll just play it and see. No, it's not a smart way to trade because look what's happening right now. By the way, I kind of figured that this was probably do this because of this double top, the way I've seen 10 million charts. But so you go taking a trade like that and you think, well, it's going to definitely be my direction. So I'm just going to go ahead and hold that. Okay. But there you go. There you go. Some questions coming in saying, no, but I do take that trade sometimes. And that is not a real good way to trade. Now, if you do take a trade like this and this does go your favor, you see how that's trying to go my favor a little bit? Well, you've got a swing right here. And if I was going to take this trade, I would probably at least get out of one, you know, if it hit that swing. That's if you took this trade at all. I'll, I'll show you how I would do it. If it touches that line, I'm going to get rid of one like that. All right, then I would literally raise my stop up right under here. Okay? Because you just got in on a thrust. Okay? Now, what's the better trade on this chart? To wait for the retracement, isn't it? Now, you could go to break even. A lot of people once they get in the profit, they they don't let it go against them. So they might even put their stop like right there. You know, that way they still have some profit in this trade. Okay. Now, if you're going to chase a trade like that, that's that's more the way I would recommend doing that kind of trade. See, we only got 60 bucks on that trade, and we paid our broker, uh, you know, say eight bucks. Okay. The best way to make money in the markets is you just literally have to wait for those retracements. 
Okay. Now there's times when they really, you know, start shooting up and you see like a trend line broken or something like that. You can take a chance just like I did just then, but see how you're, you only made like 60 bucks on it and technically only 50. Okay. But where is your trade on this chart? Well, we already drew right on here, didn't we? Let's see if we can get some kind of a trade. And we've got a little swing right across here, like so. So that's my sweet spot right there. You want to see if we can get that one? If it bounces with a bar close, I'll take that trade. And we don't know if it's going to bar close just yet. Now, you could also do another way. You don't have to go in like three. You do something like this. Say go for like 12 ticks and then add on like a PM. I'll show you how you might do this also. But you got to be watching like one chart. If you're watching four or five charts, you know, this is a little more difficult to do. If you set your region, this would uh, fire, you know, for instance, when it pops back out of the region. So what do you do? Uh, hit the market when it hits the box or wait for the bar to close up? Well, you can do it either way, uh, Pat, on your question. A safe way to enter that trade is enter on the next higher low. That's exactly right. That's exactly right, too. Mary, you're talking about lightning, and, and I agree with you 100%, because what you want is you want a little, little thrust, a little pullback. You don't have to wait for the breakout, but you want a higher low. Okay, so let's see if we can get that. I'm going to go ahead. I'm a little bit more aggressive trader, so I'm going to take one on a bar close to the upside if we get it. We are looking for long so far. If it breaks down, we'll, we'll be looking for a thrust retrace. May close up, may not. It's about to close. Got it going about 10 times, so it should be fairly quick. All right. Now, what Mary's talking about, let me show you. Let's get the target out of the way for just a minute. Not necessarily that you would do this. I'm just going to be teaching here for a couple of minutes. Okay. What Mary's talking about, see, right now you've got basically bars that headed straight down. What she's talking about is a higher low if we get it. Now you've got a low right down here. And if that bar closes to the upside, and now see you don't have a higher low anymore, so let's see if we get it again. There's a, there's a little bar up. See if we get a little bar down at all. Maybe a bar up again even. We can turn on power meter, by the way, just in case this thing decides to blow upward. Like that. Let's see if we can get a higher low here. Sorry about the dog barking. I don't know what's going on out there. Linda will take care of it. Okay, so far we don't have a, a higher low yet, Mary. Let's see if we can get one. Now, if it takes out this swing right here, it should see fire of the trade. See there? Now, that's a little breakout trade. Notice how it took it on PM meter right there. Okay. Now, this particular one doesn't look like it got a higher low. So the PM actually took the trade and we're good for it. Okay. Whoops. Sorry about that. All right. Now I've got my break even set at 25 on this one. I'll set it at like uh, 18 is fine. We'll go to break even. Well, we're already at break even, so we're good. Okay. Everybody see how you could take that trade right there? A good way to take it. We had our sweet spot drawn. We knew where it was going to retrace to because of the swings. And do we know, for instance, where to get the next trade? Well, I like the predictor trades. Now, if this doesn't go ahead and pop up and stays in a channel, then we're going to actually draw some other areas. But if it does thrust up, we'll know where the next, uh, next place to get in. If it stays sideways, we'll also know where the next place to get in because predictor will draw it. Okay, that went up to what, 85, 87. We've still got one runner. Okay, now what I personally like to do when I get a trade like this is I like to actually 
turn on my power meter to get out of the trade. Well, we already missed it. See that? So I would probably just simply click close. Okay? Because power meter went red. And that means that I'm breaking what I call my micro. Now, I didn't do it with a close. I'm not sure why that went red, but it didn't do it with a close. So we might not should have gotten out of that. But where's our next trade on this chart? Anybody? Because you should be able to start drawing on your chart and see it. Let, let's see if we can look at our black chart and figure it out real quick. Bear with me just one second. We're going to look at our black chart so we don't have a lot of prices and everything on here. Okay, bear with me a second. I'm going to get rid of uh, Lightning 3. We don't really need it right now. And let's see here. We're going to go with Lightning like that. So let's draw on our chart and see if we can figure out. What do you think? You want to see if we can figure out where it is? All right, let's draw on our chart. Okay, let's see. We're going to draw a line here. We're going to draw a line here. Okay. And this is what we call a micro support here. So I'm going to draw a line right there. And pretty much I'm going to say this is kind of a sweet spot area right here. Let's see if we can get it. Let's change that to white so we can see it. Okay, so I'm drawing on my chart. I know that they shouldn't be able to take out this 68 because it is a lightning swing. Let's look at a lightning 2, though. Lightning 1 is a little quicker. Let's look at lightning 2. Okay, lightning 2 hasn't even drawn yet. Let's see, why not 76? Pat, on your question, let's look at it. 76, this is an area that if it holds micro, but I'm talking about a, a full retrace, an entry for a trade that I'm not taking a thrust. Okay, now if this did bounce, like at this 76, you could take a shot at an entry, but what I'm talking about is more, you know, we've had a thrust, we want to retrace. So let's look even at the fib just to see about where that might be. Looks like about in my sweet spot, doesn't it? That's a 50% right there, and this is 61 down here. So on this full move, I would personally think that it would be somewhere in this area right in here. Because on these pullbacks, you don't really want over a 61. Bear with me a second. I'm going to fix that. Like that. Okay, and let's just let's just remember that, 62 to 67, okay? So I've got my little fib drawn on my chart. Now, like I said, I'm not talking about, we've already gotten this trade. So we're not looking really to get in this trade again until we get like a predictor. Okay, so let's look at the chart and see if we can get it. 62 to 67, right? We'll see if we can get something. Oh, and by the way, uh, Midband says 63, so let's draw a line there, too. Remember, we got this one just a minute ago. We nailed it. So let's see if we can nail it again. All right, you had a thrust retrace. That's in this area, so that won't do. Thrust retrace. There's another line we could draw. And lo and behold, it comes right about Midband. So let's see if we can get that trade. Now, Pat, on your question, could you actually, if you're a gutsy and quick trader, if you missed this entire trade, could you take a chance at it like right here? Yes. But if you do, what I'd, I'd highly recommend, let's say if you took it on a bar close, I would literally not let them take the bar out. Because, see, you've already thrust. And, and what happens a lot of times in these thrusts, see, you've gone from 47 to 90. That's 43 ticks. You know, 30, 40 tick type thrusts are pretty pretty common, you know, and then you want to wait for those pullbacks, okay? Now, could we take a chance, you know, for you gutsy traders out there, if you want to take like a power meter short for a quick pop, could we do that? 
we'll see. We're trying to get down to here. If this does a power meter to the downside, see right now it's green. If it takes out that swing right there, it would change. Now that would be a gutsy trade. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to literally wait for like a retrace. If you do that particular trade, you've got to put your stop above 90. Okay, Let, let's just see if it triggers. I, we'll find out. You need a high, a low, a lower high, and break that little swing there. Now this is not personally a trade that I would take normally, but I want to, I want to just see how Parameter actually does for a quick pop. And we'll probably just, let's go for eight ticks instead. If we can get it quick enough. It is definitely retracing. Now that didn't give me my red, so I don't think I'd take this. When I get the new lightning built, I'm going to have that trade trigger automatically even. See the high, the low, the lower high? breaks like that if you want it that is you'll be able to do it it'll be called like uh, real lightning or something like that but to cut down on losses though and that's what the name of the game is today is that a trade we really want to take right there not really but where would you have to put your stop if you did see you're already in the red I'd put my stop just above there. And if it gets it, it gets it. That's fine. Okay? That's how some people end up giving up some of their money is chasing trades like this too because they think, hey, this is topped out or whatever. Who, who knows this trade might work in my favor, but I'm already, what, five ticks? That's $150 given up. So be careful of that kind of trade like that. You know, lots of people do that particular trade and, you know, you'll stack up more losses doing that because isn't the better trade, we said 63, let's, let's go ahead and draw it again. There's 65 right there. That's a swing that has not been hit yet. There's a predictor trade, right? Predictor. And let's see if we can do Mary's way again. Now, this one didn't do it, Mary, did you notice? But but Object Trader Power Meter still caught it right there on that bar. It's pretty cool. But let's see if we can get a higher low. Well, we ended up, I'm going to go ahead and protect this. Okay. What Mary's talking about is like a higher low. So let's see if we can get something. We got a low. We got another candle, right? And what she's talking about is more like this. You need a little thrust up. We don't know exactly where it's going to go, but more than likely right there where, where resistance is. And then we need a little pullback with a higher low, and then you need to take out that low a little bit, not take out the top. Okay, let's see if we can get that. We'll remove the lines. I'll put them, put the one back that we want at 63, wasn't it? Matter of fact, didn't we already get 63? And we had that nail, didn't we? Okay, so so probably what I would have done would have gone ahead and bought one. Okay, now this is late because we we already diagnosed it at where that swing. That's where we had it drawn on our last chart. It hadn't checked there yet. Everybody see that? Let's see, how do you tell the difference between topping out and consolidating for another move in the same direction? Uh, Carl, on your question. Well, basically, what you're going to be looking at on any time you take a trade, okay, look at the direction that it's going first off. And I like to look at what I call my medium swings, okay? The medium swings are pretty important because, you know, for instance, if you were to short this thing, and hold some kind of large stop or something, well, the, the overall trend is, that, is up right now, right? So we don't want to go against that. Now, let, let's do this Mary's way, because this one didn't do it, but it did take out that little swing right there. See it? 
See your lightning thrust, retrace thrust. You can draw it if you don't see it. Let me draw it for you. Why does that keep coming up like that? There we go. See there? See, that's where Object Trader PM fired that trade right there when it took out that swing. Okay. Now, what I'm wanting to do with uh, a light, lightning type trade for Object Trader is to start taking these trades based on, like, let's let's say we do just one contract when you get a thrust and a pullback with a higher low and it does break the little swing. This is going way too slow. Let me speed it up a little bit. Let's see if we can get that higher low. How do you know which swings price will check on a retrace? Chris, on your question, uh, you can actually draw your lines on your charts and you can tell, see, now this looks like a higher low. Now this would fire another another contract, basically, we'll, we'll go ahead and do two, or yeah, three, it's fine, when it takes this out right here. If this is going to be a higher low, that is. So you've got a low, a high, a higher low because it's trying to close up. There you go. So you've got a higher low. Mary, do you usually fire it on the very next bar then when you get a higher low like that? Or wait for the little breakout? on the bar itself when it closes, like for instance, it would be fired on this bar right here on this particular instance, right? Because this was your higher low when the bar closes itself. Now you could actually get in right there then if you did that a little little lower than what I did just then. I see on the predictor trade, I never know when to fade it or buy it on the top, middle, or bottom. Well, the best way I think that you can do that, Pat, on your question, look to see where an actual swing was. Now those predictors are drawn those real well to begin with. You have to watch it to see if they're going to take it down some more. That's true. And, and you would put your stop just underneath the swing, I would imagine, right? Or would you put it under this one here? Okay. Well, we're in it with four, so let's see if, see if it works. So I'm going to go ahead and strengthen my stop now to write there with the exit on close like that. Okay, let's see, what do we have? Oh, and we only had one target. We forgot to turn our other targets on. That wasn't as smart because that gives you four, four contracts on one target. I'm going to fix that one of these days where you can split that line like chart trader because, see, I forgot to turn those on. And that I don't particularly like because here's what I would end up doing in a case like that. I would look to my resistance to the left there and there, and I'd probably take one off on each one of them. So if it touches this one here first, which it is, I'd take one off. If it touches this one, I'd take another one off, and keep in mind, if you had your targets, you could move them. But since I don't, I have to just take them off manually. Take one more off, raise this up to the next level, take one more off. Everybody see that? Or sniper, absolutely. You could, if you had time, you could draw a sniper on your chart and just use the lines. I'm just doing it by eye. See if we get anything else on this. Where's our ultimate top on this thing? It's at 90, right? So let's see if we can get here first, 87. We'll take one more off. We'll go ahead and bring our stop under here because that's lightning swing. It's not identified just yet, though. Yeah, you could turn on sniper like right here. Let's see if we can do it in time. Take sniper, and you would want to 
touch like something like that right there and that would take one off right there and you have to activate it and you don't want that one in the way right there although it's not active it may get us it bounced nope got us that's fine okay so we're out of that trade right now keep in mind that um, our stop probably should have been a little bit lower. Now, you want to try to get to that top again? We can do that if you want. PM to the upside. We'll do two. Oh, that's too late. I don't like that. Too late. See, it's trying to take that swing instead of that one. So I would not take that trade. Everybody see that? Why did I not on that? Because if lightning would have triggered it right here, and you could have done it manually, but see, lightning didn't trigger it there. Notice when that bar closed, it didn't even trigger it, so we didn't want it. Okay? Now, so far, we've had no, no losers. Okay, so let's look at our chart again and see if we can figure out exactly where this thing's going. Remember, we've already, we're out of a trade, so we've got to wait for what? A thrust and a retrace or a retrace? Okay, so let's see if we can look at our black chart and figure out where it's going. Let's go ahead and draw it again. I'm going to get rid of uh, some of this stuff on the chart. See if we can figure this out in time. We get rid of lightning three. And we'll get rid of lightning one from way over here because we need to draw it in another area. Okay, so let's draw lightning two and see if we can figure out where this is going. Got a low here. I would say we got a sweet spot right in, right in through here. I need to change that default, don't I? Okay, so we're looking between 63 and 66, and we're looking for. Let's see if Lightning One is anywhere where we can see it too. Oh, okay. Lightning One is already here, so we're looking more like here than instead. And I think we've already gotten it. See it where it popped up and pulled back. Let's look at the real chart. I think we missed it. Yeah, we missed it. See it? Predictor. Nailed it though, didn't it? Is that pretty cool? So we had it diagnosed right. We just missed it because well, I've got it running about 50 times, so it's actually moving a little quicker than we need it to. You want to see if we can diagnose the very next one, though, and see if we can figure it out? Let's look at our black chart and see. we got Lightning 2 on here. I'm going to not go 50 times because we need to figure it out and get the trade, okay? So we'll see if we can do it. Let's just do it on the this chart instead and I'm going to get rid of lightning way over here because we don't need it let's look to the left to trade the right and see where if they thrust up okay 76 we've got a swing right here and we've got a swing here that's not identified yet because they haven't taken out the top if they take out this top, this is an identified swing. So they shouldn't be able to take that out on a pullback. Okay? So let's see if we can figure it, figure this one out. Let's run it a little faster. You want to see if we can get it? Now keep in mind, this is pretty choppy, so you're going to want to take some coin. You can clearly tell that they're barely taking out these tops. They'll probably barely take out this top again is what they'll do. Sweet spot. What do you think? Sweet spot? Let's go ahead and buy it. 
it bounced off that. Came right into my area. Did you see that? Look at that. Well, we already hit our target, so it's too late. All right. See how easy that actually is if you just look at your charts? Now, I'm going about 50 times again, so let's slow it down one more time. And I want you all to pick out the next one. Okay? You want to draw on your charts? Okay, we'll draw on the chart with lightning first, and then I want you all to pick it out. Let's see if we can figure it out. Notice how it's just barely taking out those tops. How predictor is actually predicting it, though. See how the predictors are just pretty much sideways? This has not had any kind of a breakout yet. Okay, so let's draw on our charts and see where do you think that more than likely we're going to hit our head. Anybody? All right, let's draw on our charts and see. We've got a high, we've got a low, we've got a low here. All right, so we can't take out these lows if we're going to head down, right? That That's obvious. Okay, so draw your line. They can't take this out if they're going to head up. High, low, higher high. That's an established low. Okay, uh, let's see. Have they checked this right here? Yep, they checked it on the last one, so now we're going to have to go up, aren't we? So let's go to our next level. Let's see here. Yeah, that's a little bit of support right there, but I think they'll go lower than that. 76. This is a little tougher. Let's go here. And we'll wait for a predictor. All right, so we're drawn on our chart. We cannot get in lower than this because that won't be a long anymore. Okay? So let's see if where predictor shows up and see if we can get a trade. I got my lines drawn on my chart. Thrust, retrace. That's support right there at 79. That's that's where Charles and I would be calling that out in the room that should hold on a pullback. Okay, let's see if we can get something. There's your predictor. Just almost right where I drew my line. What do you think? Predictor. And we've been heading up a little bit each time, right? So let's draw us a trend line. See if we can get us. And keep in mind, there, there's going to be more than likely another predictor that will show up to the right here. And we're going to try to take some coin. I'm going to protect this, though. Now, does everybody see why we drew it right there? And predictor picked it. Notice how I drew my line here, but predictor picked a little higher. So looking to the left to trade the right, I think it pretty much picked it without the wicks. You know, keep in mind that predictor is actually, you know, it, it's doing a lot of this based on what it sees to the left, just like we taught it. What does everybody think? Do, do you think you can trade this particular way if you just draw on your charts? Let's see. Another thing about CL is they always run stops before running. I like to wait until I see a stop run and enter on that. You could do that too, uh, Mary, on your question. What, what I like personally about oil, I mean, when it's heading the direction you want it to, you're definitely going to be getting higher lows and higher highs, right, on, on a long. And you can clearly see that you've got high, low, higher high, higher low than over here, right? Same high, but a little higher, just, just barely ratcheted up, higher low higher high, higher low not yet until it takes this this high out, right? But that's your new low if they take that out, see? So our job as traders is to actually see if we can get into these trades at the proper time and see if we can get some decent coin in doing so. Let's see if we can pick another one. 
Let's see if we can look to the left to trade the right. I'm going to get rid of the bars so we can see a little bit clearer. See if we can pick out this next trade. I'm going to get rid of Lightning 1. I'm going to go with Lightning 2. All right, let's see if we can figure this out. Okay, you've got a low that's pretty much established right here. Right? Got a high over here that hasn't been tagged yet. Like so. And let's see where they're at right now, or as close as we can with Lightning 1. So that's actually where we're at right now. So let's see if we can get down and figure out if we can figure where our sweet spot is. What do you think? You need a higher low than this, don't you? So isn't this our sweet spot? You got a high, you got a low here by looking at these swings, and I'm going to draw a little area. We don't want to take that out if we're going to continue heading up, right? So we're 85 to 84. Let's look at our chart. And see if we can get another little sweet spot. Okay? See if we can get a pullback. I'm going to go ahead and kill this trade. We're going to see if we can get another one. So we said 85 to 84, right? We've got a swing here at 82. We had a swing over here to the left at 84. And we said this is going to be our little sweet spot. Higher than that. Let's see if it gets it. I'm going pretty fast, so I may not be able to catch it. Just came into my area. There you go. Just got another one. Everybody see a little bit better how to see on your charts maybe where these things are? A little bit better at that? Now let's look here. Whoa, just a second. They're breaking what we call medium. Just a second. Let's look at it. See if we can get a trade. We may have already missed it. We've got, remember when they break micro, they go down and check uh, your secondary and your medium. This is your medium swing right here at 73, right? Your predictor, though, is saying, 71, let's look to the left to trade the right, and your low right here is 63. Okay, does everybody see where you got kind of got a sweet spot on here? I'm going to draw a couple of areas. Now this is what we call a phantom trade. Let's see if we can get it. Now, if it breaks this swing right here, I'm going to go ahead and grab it and hope that it goes all the way up here. But that would be lightning changing. Now, so far, you've got a higher low than this one here. So we kind of missed a little trade, but I'm going to see if we can go any deeper. A lot of times when they go with those red. By the way, has anybody heard of our old days of red bar probes? We used to get in literally on the bar that closed up. And you can usually get a scalp that way. It's called a deep probe. Okay, let's look to the left to trade the right and see if we can figure this one out. Phantom is right here. This area right here that we've got drawn on our chart. And if it doesn't quite come down there and doesn't take out this 67, this is an area of a sweet spot right here. Now, if this is going to change trends, we're going to know it in a little bit, but you can also turn on this little tool right here, power meter one. See how it bounced right where, I, right where I thought it would? See there? Support. Now, we haven't gotten our higher low 
like Mary talked about before, let's see if it's going to even get it. We may not get a higher low. Now, see, I, I like to already be in that trade myself. But we're, we turned on power meter, so we're, gonna just, we're just going to try it. But I don't like that because already it came right, exactly right down where I wanted it. Everybody see that? How you can draw on your charts? Now this to me is a late trade if this fires right here. And if I was up $1,700 like that right now, I'd probably, if it fires, I'd put my stop literally below uh, the low. And it did. So I'm not going to just, we're going to get a target out of the way. We're going to see if this takes out this swing here with the close of a bar. It did not. It's trying, though. See if it will. See why, see why I don't like that trade? It just hit resistance. Now, I would probably more than likely see when that power meter went, I would have quick done a quick short. But let's, let's just hold it. I'm going to hold it right to... Oh, there you go. That must have been, oh, that was uh, oil inventory. We wouldn't have held it through oil inventory, so that, don't pay any attention to that. That was oil inventory, but see how, see how this was diagnosed in real time where this should actually hit its head? So what does everybody think about doing this on your charts from now on? It just gave another one. By the way, I called this trade in the room on uh, Thursday for people that even wanted this little predictor trade right there. Everybody remember that? Now when this thing is going nuts like it is right now, if this decides to break this little area right here, you know, with the close of a bar, it doesn't look like it is yet, so we're, you know, you're fine. Just, just literally, we're out of the trade, we already got our targets, we're going to wait for a retrace or a break of lightning. Now, usually when oil is running like this, I will go ahead and take a lightning type trade. We are going to add a feature on Object Trader that this particular trade would enter again. It would enter again. See how this came down? Made a fresh or higher low. It would enter again here. So you, you'll be able to actually do that if you want. Okay? Now, if this comes below that swing right there, I'm going to personally going to short it. And why am I doing that? Because it's dressed up a lot, and I think if it does happen to break, it's going to give me at least 10 ticks. Remember, 39 should hold on any kind of a pullback to the upside. See how parameter just went red? I'm going to take a chance on it. And the reason I'm doing this is because lightning is actually a high, a low, a lower high. And there, I just got me a quick little target. Okay. Pretty cool way to trade. Did you know if you actually turn on lightning one and just use it, no, probably even lightning two a lot of times even, that it will actually do some really, really great trades? By the way, that's a phantom. It's going too quick for me. It would have already been in. Yeah, definitely. See how it came down here? Right on top of that swing close enough. I would have grabbed that on Phantom, but it's too late now. Okay, now, when this starts going like this with this yellow midband, did you know you can actually use this new predictor trader? I think we already missed it, but I'll show you how to use it once you get it. See that predictor right there? We, we can actually use it. Like that, see there? Because that's going sideways right now. That predictor, and I'd put my stop just above that swing, like that. And the reason that I would take that type of trade like that is because you can actually trade these predictors when they start going sideways. But you want to take your coin fairly quickly. For instance, on Predictor, you can even do this if you want, and you'll have this hopefully this weekend. I'm working on it.
See that predictor right there? And I definitely put my stop at mid-band though. I don't want them to take it out. Predictor to predictor. See now if you use trend, you wouldn't be able to do anything but along there. But the new predictor will let you do this particular trade if you want. And what alerted me to that is that right there. When that goes sideways, this this is knowing that they're not heading up and they're not heading down. They're starting to go sideways. So when they do that, you can a lot of times trade these predictors. You got a swing right up here. That would be a pretty good shot for trying to get that trade, wouldn't it? Or you can just go like this, get it out of the way, do a reverse on predictor if it happens to hit this predictor, which is right at a swing, and come back down. See there, it just reversed it. And I probably put my targets like that. That's how you can trade these predictors in the chop like this. With the new predictor trader, if you were to simply choose long only, then you wouldn't get that short trade. If I was to do trend up here, for instance, like this, I won't even get a long. I mean, a short, so you won't even be able to turn it on. Okay? This can actually be a pretty good way to trade, too. Predictor to predictor. Let's see, does anybody have a question so far? And is everybody seeing how we get those sweet spots? Can you have long and short on predictor? Absolutely, Lee, on your question. The way I had predictor designed, let me, let me just go over that real quick because we've got about eight minutes. Can you show how to reset the new TF on Ninja before the webinar ends? Yes, I'll do that also. Uh, Lee, on your question though, yes, what you could actually do with that, let's say for instance that you just want like scalps, you know, like predictor to predictor, which it already did, so you're out of the trade, right? Now this may go lower, we don't care, right? Because we're just going to go predictor to predictor, okay? Let's run it for a minute and just see. Now that got a long right there. I don't think I'd do a long right there. Well, it did fire it, and we didn't turn that off. So I'm going to protect this, though, because this is definitely getting a high, a low, pretty sideways. Is it going to go up or is it going to go down? We don't know yet. Uh, let's see. The trail stop use would probably have to go more with that uh, run that we had on oil just a little while ago, you know, where it did that monster run up, but that was actually at inventory. I can actually do that on Monday instead since we didn't get around to that. Does everybody see how you'll be able to use this predictor? By the way, let's say, for instance, that this was to decide to actually go under this predictor without using my stop. We don't know if it's going to, but it's looking like it's lightning down to me. Could we actually flip this trade and try to get down to here? Yes. If it bounces, we'll still be okay, right? But if it does take out this predictor right here, it would actually flip the trade. Which it looks like it's lightninging down, like it might just do just that. We'll see. Oh, it was firing another predictor. That's why it didn't do that. I'd, I'd actually already be reversing that trade myself. Let's see if we can get it. If it takes out support, I'm going to try to get to the next level. Good enough for me. See how it kind of rolled up to stealth and rolled over? But on the question that came in, uh, you can use the predictors. The way the predictor is done, I'm going to go ahead and close this so I can talk. The way we design predictor is predictor is simply a region. 
okay? It's literally like drawing a region on this chart like that, okay? And like this. And like this, of course. And the way this does is it'll actually, if you have it set for long above and short below, it'll fire a long trade at predictor, a long trade at predictor, that one got stopped out. But you can also flip it like I just did. Okay. And the reason I flipped that one was because it went underneath here. Okay. Now you've got a magenta. So what are you looking for? You're looking for a white one. Everybody knows that the predictor just changes colors because of the mid band, right? That, that's literally all you're doing is you're changing because of the mid band. Uh, are we going to change them so they can be rectangles? You know, we easily could because uh, the reason that I did this this way is because we used to have this little indicator and it's still in our object trader. This one right, object trader identified swing is in here somewhere, isn't it? Yeah, identified swings minor. Those are ellipses and so is the swings long term. That's why we did them as, as like that. I mean, I can see them the way they are, and I kind of like them the way they are. I, I just like them as ellipses. Okay, let's see if we can get another trade. Let's see if a predictor will show up. There's a predictor. Looking to the left to trade the right, you'd figure if you're going to head down, you'd have a lower high than this. So that's predictor saying right there. Let's take it. Is there a way to change the size of the predictors? No, it's actually in the program. I am talking to the programmer about some things about predictor to see if we can actually do. Now see, if I set that for touch plus one, that should fire if it gets within one tick of that predictor and then tries to bit back down. See, it looks like it's within two ticks right now. There it is. See how it fired it automatically? I'd probably try to at least get there on one of my trades. Like that, at least. Like that. What does everybody think? Do you feel like you can manage your losses a little bit better if you draw on your charts? You know, we're trying to get these uh, indicators where they'll draw on your charts for you. You know, um, for instance, let's just go back on some of those trades that, that I drew on the chart and see how entering would have been pretty much a no-brainer. We've got the lines drawn on the charts. There's a predictor trade. There's a predictor trade. There's a predictor trade right here that looks like it came to this swing here. There's a predictor trade. There's one that did not work. It might have gotten you a scalp. There's a predictor trade that definitely worked. That's another one I think would have fired if it was within two ticks because I set mine on two ticks usually. That's 09 to 11. That should have fired on that one too. And then this one would have fired, but you would have got stopped out. But do you see that if you actually turned on the, left the trend off, that you could get this trade? Let's say that you got in this trade and it didn't do what you wanted, but then it closed below it or touched below it. You got you a quick little scalp. Then you got another trade, another trade, another trade, another trade that might have gotten a scalp, maybe not but you did get where you could head down a little bit. There's another predictor right there. Why is it coming there? Let's see if we can figure it out. Well, it's saying predictor's there, so let's just take it. Let's just see if it works. We'll see if it works. There's your trade. I put my stop just above predictor or turn on predictor to take it long if it takes that out. 
Let's just let it run, see, we'll see if it gives us anything. I'd probably try to get down to there and probably try to get down to that swing right there. Let's fast forward and see if it worked. It'll flip it if it goes above that predictor. Looks like it worked. But I went long at that predictor too, so I'm going to protect that just in case. See, see if that actually does anything. Looks to me like it's heading down, not up, especially with that uh, mid-band like that. I'd probably protect it like right in here because I don't like that one because that is definitely a trend change. And you could turn this off, obviously. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful little trade, actually, wasn't it? Look at the lines we drew on the chart. Came right down to it. It's taking it out a little bit. That was a monster short, wasn't it? Let's see, so if price takes out particular, it won't take the trade kind of like Sniper. Um... Well, it depends how you set it, Adam. Be sure and look at my webinar from last Wednesday morning because I went over a lot of the features on Predictor. And I am going to go ahead and try to get this out to everybody uh, this weekend. I was wanting to get one little thing fixed by the programmer on it before I did, but I just don't know if he's going to get to it. You know, it's the bad thing about it. So um, I'll just put with the letter that basically we're all taking a chance with it. You know, we want to be careful. And, uh, you know, trade accordingly. Always watch your coin. You know, don't just take trades just because predictor says to. If it goes against you, to give an example, uh, if you put it on, like, touch with reverse on, be aware that it can go to your max contracts, okay? Because touch simply means that it touches. Look at, look at those work out, though. There's one that worked. There's one that worked. Will this one work? We don't know. But if you had a... Stop above there. Let's just see. Because it looks like it's thrust down pretty good to me. See if that predictor works. It looks like it's about time for it to shut off anyway. See if that one works, just for the fun of it. You want to try it? Let's just try it. Let's just see if it does. That's a phantom trade, so... Now, keep in mind, I would probably wait for that power meter to go. And you could always do this, too. It's too late now. It's already done it. Beautiful trade again. Once trade is taken out, will SELE turn off? Well, the way it is, uh, Carl, on your question, let me kill this, and we'll go over that. The way the new predictor trader is, if you actually have uh, LESE turned on, long and short and enabled, those won't turn off. Okay, they'll just they'll just stay, you know, taking a long at predictor, short at predictor. If you don't want to take longs, obviously, with this downtrend, you turn your long off. Okay. But if you want to do it with the trend only, you just simply turn trend on with LESE, and it'll take this trade, it'll take that trade, it'll take that trade, and it'll do it automatically. Okay. So, in other words, if you hadn't even hit your targets or your stops, this, what I recommend doing with, with Predictor, though, is just kind of scalp it, you know, because you can get some pretty decent trades with scalping. And you can also see, let's say, for instance, you got in on this trade here, and you get a little lightning up, you get out of the trade. You get in again, you get out on lightning. So, you know, you've got a, a quick scalp, your runner gets taken out. you got another one up here that fired, you didn't get taken out, never fired through the top, and you got another trade to the downside. Can it be set to take it short at the top of a predictor like the last one? Yes. Yeah, the way that would do, Diane, on your question, you would just simply set it like a region. Let's say you had this set like a region. And you just simply set that short inside. And it would actually fire here. You could turn it back on. It would even fire here again. Or if you just wanted strictly the top of it, you could always just turn short inside on. But see, these don't always do that. See, that one came to mid, you know, middle of the predictor, gave you a trade, 
never came to the middle of predictor, gave you a small trade. And then this one came all the way up here to Phantom and gave you a better trade up here, but you wouldn't have known that at the time. You know, you would have fired the trade right in here and you'd hold it through the identified swing and it held anyway. Okay, uh, let's let's look over. Everybody needs to change for Russell on Monday. Go to Tools, Options. Okay, Tools and Options, and go to Data. And Monday morning, be sure and reset your instruments. Okay, and you also have to be on Ninja 35. Okay, Ninja 35 will have that automatically reset. Otherwise, you have to follow their directions and put RTY in and set it up that way. Are they going to change for TF data? Uh, Alex, on your question, they are changing for uh, TF data. It, it's going to be through the CME, and it's going to be called RTY. <laughs> Amazingly, it sounds like Roosty, doesn't it? Like we've been calling it for years. How do you get Ninja 35, Diane? You just go to uh, File, Utilities, pardon me, File, Help, sorry. Let me, let me get it over here to you, just a second. Okay, you go to uh, Help, 